Hi, so we're continuing to look at this uh, pulse light scriber, which is no surprise obviously because it took me a while to build it and I'm trying everything. If I could find the cat, I'd shove her under and see if we could make a conductive. What I've got this time is some of this stuff. Now this is our graphene oxide in solution and you can see from the colour of it, um, there's about half a gram per uh, litre in there. So it's a very weak solution of it. It is actually uh, 0.5 grams per litre. So it's a very weak solution of graphene oxide. Now, I'm going to use the pulse light to reduce the graphene oxide back to graphene. People have pointed out to me that um, this has been done using a LightScribe uh, DVD drive. And yes, it has. And it's a brilliant piece of work and I don't want to detract from it in any way because it's an absolutely brilliant piece of work. But it's really restrictive. You have to pass the thing through at least six times, sometimes ten times. It takes 20 minutes of run and whatever you do is going to be um, on a, a bit of a CD. It's going to fit in the drive. So all the stuff was really tiny and really awkward to make it. I gave it a go actually and it was a pain in the neck making little circles of plastic to put in your light scribe driver. With the pulse light, all you've got to do is slide a bit of A4 under there. So this stuff will go through an inkjet printer now. It's, it's graphene oxide ink, it'll go through an inkjet printer, print on a little bit of paper. You can take your paper out and you can slide it under. Now because there's so much more power in this, it takes no time at all. You give it about 10, 20 flashes and the thing is reduced to graphene. Now what I've got here is a piece of paper. And all I've done is take a pipette and drop some graphene oxide on it, swirl it around a bit and leave it to dry. And as you can see, there's virtually nothing on it. There's a little bit of staining here because I left it overnight and it cockled up and it got a little thicker here. So there's a little bit of staining, but the graphene oxide, you can just see there's a very faint stain on the paper. Now, if I take a measurement of that, so I've got this on the uh, 200 mega ohm reading because I'm expecting nothing at all. And I take a measurement of that on a graphene oxide. You can see that bit of graphene oxide on the paper has no conductivity whatsoever. Now I've been flashing it a little bit. I gave it five flashes. But we'll flash it a little bit more. So after flashing it a little bit more, so it's had about 30 seconds under the flasher unit, something like that. Now that's 32 mega ohms, okay, so the conductivity is not brilliant, it's 32 mega ohms, that's pretty resistive, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was when it was infinite. So a few flashes on that will turn that graphene outside back into conductive graphene, and that's just on a piece of paper that I squirted some on, so there's very little on there. So after trying a bit of paper, the next thing you obviously want to do is try a bit of plastic, and here it is. It's a bit of plastic, I washed with acetone first and then I did exactly the same thing, I um, drop cast, basically got the pen, put a load over, tore it around so it was all damp and then left it overnight to dry. So if we test the conductivity of that, we can see we're getting absolutely nothing. After about 30 seconds of flashing it, Here you go, we get about 46 mega ohms. Again, pretty resistive, but you have a look at that. The coating on there, that's thin. Now obviously, what I'd want to do is cut more on, onto there to get a better reading, or maybe leave it flash longer so that we can um, get some kind of continuity. And it was very rough and ready. I mean, I just put it on the bench and squeezed some on and left it overnight and it had run. So it's not a particularly um, controlled experiment. But we can see that we can uh, reduce graphene oxide back to graphene using the flash unit. And because it's a um, sheet fed mechanism here, we can do an awful lot more than you can do in a CD. Now, clearly I'm aiming here at things like transparent conductive films. I'm not aiming at supercapacitors. You'd use a different methodology for supercapacitors. You don't need this stuff. 
that for transparent conductive films made of graphene, then this looks like a really interesting way forward. Anyway, there you go. That's how to reduce graphene oxide using the photo flash sintering unit. I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.